I'm James, and today we are going to fix our camera. We're gonna learn how to repair the Sony FS7. A common issue with the Sony FS7 is the viewfinder will start to wobble, and as that jiggles, the video signal will cut in and out. It's incredibly annoying and sucks. People never ask me, James, how did you learn how to fix cameras? If they did, I would probably say I'm self-taught. So I started by just unscrewing stuff on cameras and watching what would fall off. And then I kind of explored from there. Now you could have Sony repair the camera, but after you ship the camera and pay their fee, you're looking at about $700 to have them fix your viewfinder. Or you could buy the part on Alibaba and fix it yourself for about $130. To start the repair, you're going to need your replacement part. This is a tiny chip that I found on Alibaba for $80. Shipping took about a week and was about $50. So for $130, I was able to get the part to repair the camera. Start by removing the rubber shoulder pad on the bottom of the camera. We will remove the two Phillips head screws and one flathead screw. Remove the plastic cover and now we could access the top plate. To remove the top plate, we're gonna remove eight screws. Four large screws on the perimeter located here and four smaller Phillips head screws located here and pop off your headphone jack cover. Pop, let it breathe. On the top plate, Lift the left hand edge up just a little bit and slide it back until you see the front notch on the right hand side of the top plate. When you lift the plate, keep the plate close to the camera as if there's a hinge near the Sony logo to protect this ribbon cable. Now remove the two screws that hold this plastic block in place. This plastic block holds the connection port in place that allows the camera's top handle to control zoom, start, stop, record, and the hot shoe interface. So don't break it. It's probably a good idea to secure this module to the top with masking tape or gaffer's tape. With the camera laying down, we're gonna remove this entire side panel to give us access to the viewfinder chip module we're replacing. First, we're gonna remove the four screws on the rosette and the three screws to the left of the rosette. Keep in mind, one is behind the SDI one port. Facing the front of the camera, we're gonna remove this top left screw. It's the only screw on the front of the camera. That we'll be removing. This next set of screws will allow us to remove the entire side panel. The first is a screw that holds down the protective cover. The next two screws are located next to the SDI outputs. There are two screws next to the HDMI port under the protective cover. Weather noises and two larger Phillips head screws near the XLR inputs. Here's a fun tip. I put a magnet on the side of my screwdriver so I don't lose any screws. And gently peel back that cover. Make sure you use a larger bit for these XLR screws. They're on there pretty tight. I accidentally damaged the camera the second time I took it apart because I didn't take my time. Um, I accidentally ripped the tiny ribbon cable that connects the camera body to a USB port. Uh, that USB port can be used for some wireless local area network. That It's a feature that I don't use, so right now I'm okay without it. But um, let that be a lesson, be careful. This is the cable we'll be detaching. If you wanna know what this cable does, it supplies power and data to the USB port. To remove the ribbon cable, Press downward into the camera body with your finger right here. Gently wiggle and lift the right side of the side panel. Now slide the panel to the left so they could clear the SDI outputs. Once you could clear the SDI outputs, you could lift the panel as if there's a hinge on the top part of the side panel. Here's a second view on how to disconnect that first ribbon cable. Keep in mind, I broke mine, so you might not be able to position the side panel to get this view. This is the second of five cables we'll be disconnecting. Gently hold and pull backward to disconnect this ribbon cable. This ribbon cable carries audio data to your camera. Next, we're gonna disconnect our third cable. This white cable is the Lank remote cable. 
Gently squeeze and pull back to disconnect the white cable. This is a power connector for the IR remote. It's on the bottom left hand side and this is me with my meaty hands trying to unplug it. This red and black cable is a power cable for the infrared remote receiver. Now it's time to remove the fifth cable. And how funny would that be if the video just ended right here? That would be terrible. The viewfinder module is held in place by these two copper screws. These two copper screws secure a shield and also the viewfinder module to the camera panel. Let's remove that fifth cable. Using your fingernail or tweezers, work the sides of the cable so you can disconnect it from the viewfinder module. Mark your old viewfinder chip so you don't confuse it. Insert the cable into the new chip. Congratulations, you're at the halfway point. Now all we have to do are the steps we've done up to this point in reverse. Line up the assembly onto the side panel. Line up the shield over the viewfinder module and attach the two copper screws. Lay the side panel onto the camera and make sure you don't pinch that white cable. Attach the white ribbon cable. For your XLR inputs to work, attach the brown ribbon cable onto the front part of the side panel. Reattach the brown ribbon cable. This is the first cable we disconnected. Realign the weather strip if it came loose. Before aligning the side plate, verify that the ribbons and cables aren't being snagged. To reassemble the side plate, align the SDI out ports onto the side plate. This is tricky, but slowly wiggle and move the plate to the front of the camera or to the right. Attach those three screws to the left of the rosette. Attach your rosette. Screw in the HDMI screws. Attach the SDI screws. Attach the protective cover. Attach the larger XLR Phillips head screws. Attach the front screw to the top left part of the camera. Reattach the red and black cable. Use tweezers if you have to. While holding the top plate, align the chip module. Attach the plastic block. Attach the screws for the mounting block. The top plate has a small notch. Align this notch underneath the front end of the camera. With the right side in first, gently lay down the back end of the top plate. Attach the four smaller screws. Apologies in advance, I recorded the following before buying a pop filter. Place the rubber pad parallel to the camera and attach the Phillips head screws and flathead next to the two Phillips head screws. Is the P in Phillips head silent? Like flathead and Phillips head? Oh, it is silent. That's bullshit. You're saying I have to record that all over again? This video is already eight minutes long. Sorry about that. Turn the camera over and attach the last four Phillips head screws. Congratulations, you did it. So there you have it. If you follow the steps correctly, your viewfinder should power on and work with no problem. Um, feels good. One tip, some words of wisdom. If you travel with your camera pre-built, make sure you unplug the viewfinder and also HDMI and SDI cords. When your camera is in the bag and things are flying around, they could knock into the viewfinder and HDMI cords and that will bend that connection point. So to preserve the life of your camera, make sure you unplug those ports. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, just leave a comment below. Thanks.